Hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. So in this video, I just wanna keep this train rolling of this little series I've been doing as of late, which is the, what's your complete story of fill in the blank franchise. And today we're talking about Scream. Now I've done three of these videos so far. I talked about the Halloween franchise a few months ago uh, and Friday the 13th and Elm Street in two videos just last week. So if you haven't checked them out, make sure you check them out and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But today we're doing the same thing with Scream. I posed the question to all of you Scream fans out there, all of you ghost heads out there. Is that what you guys are called? Ghost heads? Uh, what do you consider to be the complete story of the Scream franchise. Now, I think this might be the most interesting video out of these um, out of these that I've done. And the reason for that is because of the way the Scream franchise is structured. Now, before we get into all that, let me first say that what I consider to be the complete story of the Scream franchise, uh, to nobody's surprise, I'm sure, if you follow me for any length of time, is the original Scream from 1996 as just a one and done, that's it. And it's not because I don't enjoy the sequels or I hate the sequels or anything like that. I mean, the Scream franchise has been really consistent. And I've said many times on this channel that they've yet to have their catastrophic failure. They've yet to have their, I mean, this is subjective, of course, but I'm, you know, I don't believe they've had a Halloween resurrection yet. I don't believe they've had a Freddy's dead yet, a Jason goes to hell yet, a Halloween five yet, right? They haven't had that yet. I mean, yeah, maybe some movies are better than others. Maybe you like certain things about one movie and not about, okay, sure. But they, I, I don't think they've had their Freddy's dead yet. Okay, let's just put it that way. Um, so they've been pretty consistent and with six installments in, that's pretty impressive. So, um, but having said that, a lot of the sequels bleed into each other for me. And because of the way that the Scream franchise is structured, because of the kind of horror movie that it is, I don't think any of the sequels, in my opinion, have ever done what the first one did better. Like, I don't think they've done it better than what the first one did. So let's talk about the structure of the Scream franchise um, and the Scream movies for a moment and why I think the comment section below um, is going to be interesting. I think it's probably going to be the most interesting one yet uh, because of how these movies are structured. And because there hasn't been a, a catastrophic failure yet, you could make an argument and say, well, you know, I mean, the story's still going. You know, it's incomplete. I can't even answer that, Dave, because it's incomplete. It's still going because there hasn't been a gigantic catastrophic failure where you go, okay, I'm out. You know, now, again, that's subjective. Okay, there, I mean, maybe part three is that for you. Um, but I'm just saying the, the general consensus is that hasn't happened yet, right? So it's interesting. But the Scream franchise is a whodunit horror franchise, but not just a whodunit horror franchise. It's a whodunit, self-aware, meta, spoof-ish franchise. Now I say spoof-ish because it's not a spoof. I mean, it's not like airplane or <laughs> scary movie, um, but there's sometimes spoof-ishy things in there. Like in the original Scream, you have Wes Craven playing Fred the janitor in a Freddy Krueger sweater. I mean, come on, come on. If that's not a hard to the audience, I don't know what is. Um, so sometimes you see those little kind of winks to the audience. Um, but it's interesting because in a whodunit, I get the formula, I understand it. And generally speaking, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, I mean, maybe there's a film out there that doesn't, I don't know. But the formula is in a whodunit, at the end of the movie, you're supposed to find out who did it, right? There's the big Scooby-Doo reveal. Ruh row. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Scoob, look at the fucking thing. Uh, can you imagine that actually happened? Uh, but there's the Scooby-Doo moment, right? The mask comes off, the killer or killers are revealed, they spend 10 minutes telling you why they're so evil, um, and then they inevitably die because they have to pay for all the awful things that they did. And every Scream movie ends like that. Um, and the story is wrapped up. Like, So it's interesting. Um, you, could make, you could make an art. I mean, maybe there's some nuances that, I'm missing, to be fair. I admit that. I'm not the world's biggest Scream fan. Um, and I, it's not that I don't like them. I just mean I'm not as emotionally attached on a nostalgic level as some of you might be. So there might be some nuances I'm not taking into account. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that like 
every Scream movie, the story is wrapped up. It feels complete. And if they never made a Scream movie after every Scream movie, you wouldn't feel like, oh, but what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Oh, I have so many loose ends and so many questions. I mean, I don't really feel that, right? And nor would you. I mean, the whole point is that's kind of the... The design, unless you feel that way after Scream 2 because they were going to do a trilogy. I don't really know. I have to have to brush up on this. But uh, but in terms of Scream 5, I mean, if they had never made a 6, I don't think anybody would, would care in a sense from a story perspective, right? I mean, Scream 5 ends actually in a really awesome way. You have Sam who's just been through what uh, Sydney went through and she says, you know, am I going to be all right? And uh, Sydney's like, Eventually, you know, that's a great, like the symbolism around that line and the passing of that torch, you know, the philosophical sort of, you know, kind of bigger picture around that is, it's great. If they had never made another Scream movie, I would not have been like, oh, but what about this? And what about that? And what? Right, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the, that's the design. Every story, every film wraps up. So it's interesting. I'm very curious to see, and because there hasn't been the catastrophic, I'm out, you know what I mean? I'll be very curious to see what the comments are like below. I'm going to be very fascinated uh, to see with this one. Um, so it's really interesting. No secret. Uh, I've been pining for this on uh, on this channel for a while now. I want a Scream movie to end on an epic cliffhanger. I was hoping that would be part six. Uh, I mean, listen, I know that part six ends on a bit of foreshadowing. Will Sam or won't Sam? I get that, but that's not the cliffhanger I'm talking about. And I understand that in doing what I hope they do, it does shimmy the formula a little bit. Um, but I truly believe that uh, you can do what I want them to do without completely removing the DNA of what a Scream movie is. Um, as long as it's, you know, solid writing, everything is properly motivated. Um, you know, it's it's all in the writing, right? And and I believe you can get your audience to buy in um, if, it's, if it's solid in that manner. And that is that Ghostface wins. I don't mean that everybody dies. I just mean that there isn't a Scooby-Doo moment. You think there's going to be, here it comes, Scoob, get ready. But but it doesn't happen. The mask doesn't come off. We don't know who the killer is or killers are. Um, Ghostface is in complete control. You know, Sam or Tara or whoever the characters are, are, you know, lying there defeated and dirty and sweaty and bloody and all that kind of stuff. What's going to happen? And Ghostface wins, right? It ends, it cuts to black and it's like, oh shit. You know what I mean? And the response from the audience that you want is, fuck, I can't wait till the next one because I want to find out who the fuck that is. That's what you want, right? Now, it can go the complete opposite as well if the writing is really shitty. It could be like, oh, oh what? Oh, lame. No, 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 I'm out. I'm out. Resurrection happened. You know what I'm saying, right? You don't want that, right? You don't want that. Um, but I believe you can inject some adrenaline and some new life into this franchise by doing that. But it's all in the writing. And I want to have that, oh, fuck. Oh, this really is a different ghost face. Yes, in six, he was more, more like the stabby stabbies and, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, all this stuff was really kind of, oh, it was bloodier and it was, it was more intense. But I want like a, I, I want it to end on a moment where you're like, oh, this really is different. Like, oh, oh, fuck. I would love it. I'd love it. I'd love it. And then you wrap it up and you reveal everything in, you know, the next chapter. But just something to get us, just something to keep us on our toes. You know what I mean? I think that would be really cool. Anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. What is the complete story for you when it comes to the Scream franchise? Because every Scream movie is sort of a you know, a nice complete story in and of itself. Maybe the complete franchise to you is part one. Maybe it's part one and two. Maybe it's one, two, three. Maybe it's one, two, three, four. Maybe it's one, two, three, four, five. You know, I don't know. I have no idea. But because the series is still going and everything is still relatively strong, it's pretty consistent. Maybe you're going to come back and go, I don't know, Dave. Story's not complete yet, man. Look what's happening. Things are getting interesting. Things are getting juicy. You know, hey, maybe that's maybe that's how you feel. That's why I think this is going to be interesting in the comment. At least I hope it is. At least I hope it is. That's how I feel about it anyway. Jump into the comment section and let me know your thoughts when you can. My name's Dave McRae. If you want to follow me on social media, you can. There are my links right there. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. All my links are in the description. Check them out until your heart's content. And when your heart is content, check them out again. That'll, that'll do it for me. In the meantime and in between time, I will talk to you soon. Cheers.